just a rock star in the world of child advocacy, and she's unbelievably talented at what she does, which is a really, really Thank difficult you. job, Angie. So maybe you can tell our guests a little bit about yourself to start off with, and then a little bit about the Child sure. Advocacy Center. Sure. Well, I started here at Jumbrook um, in, well, I guess that would have been about 14 years ago, 14 years next month, and so... Uh, I started out as a Healthy Families Home Visitor, um, and then I became kind of a supervisor at Healthy Families, then went into our Community Partners Program, and in 2010, I started in the Advocacy Center, um, kind of as the director, when it was a part-time position at that time, we conducted about 70 interviews, um, it was just myself um, in there, and it was just kind of building those relationships with teens. And then we kind of, I guess it has grown since right. then. And then this past year, we've done about 420 interviews. So 420 interviews. And maybe can mm -hmm. you explain to someone who doesn't know anything about his nation, what is an interview and what, how does it start? And sure. Um, well, our Child Advocacy Center is for children that have alleged abuse. So that was reported um, to somebody, you know, it could have been a parent, a teacher, whoever that they know, that they, um, then that person will have called Department of Child Services and or law enforcement. And those two kind of, we work together as a team. And so law enforcement, Department of Child Services will kind of call, contact each other when they get a report in. They set it up with the family to come in here to Doombrook to have an interview done. Um, and then we kind of go from there. They That's kind of the start. We don't want uh, children to have to, tell their story over and over and over again. And so instead of Department of Child Services going out and asking a whole bunch of questions and then law enforcement getting involved and asking that child a lot of questions and then they may come in here um, and then asking questions again, by the time, if that happens, by the time they get in here, they're tired of telling their story, you know, what had happened. And they um, sometimes will be a little angry about that or just, I've told everybody, I don't want to tell it again. Right. Um, but so, those professionals will come in and they listen um, into our observation room. So the child will come in with us as an interviewer. Um, we sit in kind of our, what we call our interview room, and it's just myself and the child um, in that room. And then the team is in the observation room and we wear an earbug um, so that, and it's video recorded so that um, it can you know, they can take that and watch it over again to hear what the child had said. Mm -hmm. And then we just ask non-leading, um, non-suggestive questions to the child and get as many facts as we can out of what had happened to that child. And so we, um, we will talk to kids from the ages of 2 to 17. Um, and then we've also talked to a lot of adults um, that may have had some... Um, Kind of a cognitive level as a child and mm -hmm. stuff and so we will talk to them as well um and so then this, those kids i guess just kind of um tell us what we go through and then law enforcement and department of child services at that time will go through and start their investigation yeah. and then once they start their investigation it goes on to prosecutors um we have a family advocate that she's awesome with our families she sits with the families during um the time the child is being interviewed and they, um, you know, are a little shell shocked, mm -hmm. you know, they might have had law enforcement and department of child services asking them, you know, a whole bunch of questions and telling them that their child disclosed, um, some types of abuse. And so, you know, they, and then they're asked, you know, to come right in either that day or the next day, you know, and they have not a lot of time to process what was going on. So our family advocate sits with them kind of explains the whole process and what's going on. She gives them a lot of resources within the community. Mm -hmm. um, if that child would need an exam, she will get that set up. She will help get them, um, you know, therapy and stuff right. set up. And so we have kind of a wraparound services that go through. Right. Um, and I can remember when I first started, and I, I am just – and I know I'm biased, Angie, but mm -hmm. you, you all do such a fabulous job. And John Boyd, our sheriff, um, LaPorte County head of sheriff's department, talks about how Doombrook's Child Advocacy Center really is such a gem because Angie's done a fabulous job 
of the multidisciplinary team getting along together, you know, the prosecuting attorney, law enforcement, DCS, and how Angie has helped really uh, bridge the communication between all those parties in order to help the child. Mm -hmm. And so we have, um, so when kids come in and they've alleged abuse, it's usually the majority of what we see is sexual abuse. Um, and then we have also see physical abuse, um, which is kind of on the rise right now during this, you know, everybody being stay at home. We right. saw a lot more severe uh, yeah. physical abuse. Um, and then we also see, you know, kind of witnesses to a crime. So it could be witness to domestic violence. It could be witnesses to drug use. Um, we have mm. children that have witnessed homicides. Um, and so we will talk with them um, about that. Anything that they would need kind of a child's statement for so that they're not going to the police station and police are asking them a lot of questions. So we're just trained to be able to elicit the facts out of a child in a non-leading, non-suggestive way. Um, but as I was saying, we kind of work with the team. Um, and so it's not just us, you know, at the Child Advocacy Center mm -hmm. that does this, but we have Department of Child Services and law enforcement that come in and then we also kind of look at it as a whole and a, you know, we want to be very organic with the way we look at everything. Um, and so we may set up if a child has, you know, a disclosed sexual abuse and there had maybe had been some penetration. Um, and, you know, kind of recent, um, most kids wait a, quite a while, but there are times where things will be have been recent. Um, and so our family advocate will immediately set up with our SANE exams, which are sexual assault nurse examiners. And we have um, fabulous ones at both LaPorte Hospital and Michigan City Hospital. Um, so she has a good relationship. We text them. We can figure out when, you know, they can come in. If um, they're not working at the time, they will come in to do those exams. Um, and she will do those exams. And a lot of times it's just to reassure that their bodies are okay. About 5% of kids will find actually evidence of trauma, um, but it's mainly just to make sure that they're okay. And then they will be able to explain in a court, you know, sure. their findings and, you know, the reasons why, you know, they may have found something or the reasons why they may not have found something. Um, and so the monthly we kind of have our, what we were mentioning, our MDT, which is multidisciplinary team, and that's just... Our nurse examiners, um, we have mental health that we kind of work with that can help during those meetings, just letting us all know why kids may be experiencing the trauma that they're experiencing, letting us know why they may be acting out in certain ways or, um, you know, why they're withheld and stuff. And so that our team is better educated on the mental health of our children that we're seeing and so that we're not giving any kind of a bias of, well, that team was very rebellious and you know they're just a bad child well it could be because of all this abuse mm -hmm. and so they're there to help kind of educate us um, as our team and stuff kind of come through and then we also have our prosecutors um, law enforcement and department of child services and so once the department of child services is there mainly just to ensure the safety of the kids and making sure that the environment that they're in is safe um, that a lot of times it's very familiar so it's usually somebody within the home that is abusing them. Mm -hmm. um, so say if it's mom's boyfriend and mom's having trouble processing what she's just hearing, um, it's just Department of Child Serv Services is making sure that there is a plan in place that that boyfriend is out or that, you know, the child's have, you know, that they will be going home to a safe environment and if mom cannot ensure that safety, then they would be looking for alternative means for right. to make sure that those kids are safe. Well, I was just going to say, yeah. so the, the exciting... Uh, so powerfully important service that you provide is to break the chain of abuse. You know, I, I know child abuse is very difficult, both physical and sexual is a difficult topic for people to talk about. But as we see every day, and Angie interviews almost every day, um, is that it's a reality in our communities throughout everywhere. So to recognize it, if you see something, to say something, report it, mm -hmm then Angie in the Child Advocacy Center and the MBT team does such a fabulous job with integrity of processing the whole situation. Yeah, it's a, everybody is a mandated reporter. So if you um, were to see something, you know, we've had calls where somebody had seen something in a parking lot. Um, 
and they, you know, a child was being hit in the parking lot, and so they called it. They called yeah. it in. Um, they didn't know they had a license plate number, and that was what they had, yeah. you know, kind of gone through. So, Angie, um, can I just ask, mm-hmm. people say all the time, you know, who am I to report something? But you don't have to diagnose it or be sure of one thing or another. I know teachers, it's hard if a child comes in having been a school counselor and they have a bruise on their eye. You know, was it really their cousin or was did something happen? Yeah, and we have, we have that a lot. Um, kids will come in and somebody has reported, you know, that they think that somebody has sexually abused, the, you know, this child and or physically abused, you know, and we'll, we'll be talking with this kind. And it could be you know, a very big misunderstanding yeah. of what they saw or what they heard or what they, you know, when a child, or maybe there is something there and we're having a conversation. Mm-hmm. And so that child is not, you know, traumatized. A lot of times when kids actually have abuse that are going on and we're talking with them and they are so relieved and mm-hmm. thank you for listening. I feel much better now that I've talked, you know, and I just, so they're very much relieved when they come through kids that, don't disclose any kind of abuse while they're talking with us. Um, Maybe not ready to disclose. We might have a feeling that maybe something did happen, Um, but it's a process for those kids, and they may not be ready to disclose at that time, and that's where our family advocate really encourages that families get them into therapy, and then maybe down the road that they will be ready Ready. to talk about what's going on. And then we have children that, you know, that, you know, Something didn't happen. It maybe mom didn't like the new girlfriend that's at dad's house, and sure. so then she's reporting one thing or another. And so then it was just, you know, we'll come in and the kids are like, oh, uh, you know, and everything's good yeah. at my house, everything, right. you know, and we explore every yeah. avenue. And we never ask, did anybody do this to you? Did this happen? You know, and because yeah. we have to be very um, non leading and non judgmental. Right. And I know every family that comes into the Child Advocacy Center uh, completes a survey. And on those surveys, I think one of the reoccurring themes I hear is um, I never felt judged. Mm -hmm. You know, coming in, it's very scary for the child and the family members who come in. And you all do such a great job of having integrity, not judging, and just supporting them, no matter what's happened, as you said. Yes, we never know where anybody's coming from or anybody's background. And so we just need to support them in that moment um, with whatever's going on. And so our family advocate does an awesome job on, you know, kind of making sure that that happens. And as an interviewer, a lot of times the kids will be like, well, I want to talk to you again, you know, or yeah. when can I come back? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, yeah. So they just, yeah. they, um, you know, we just want to make sure that they're as comfortable as possible talking about a subject that is the most uncomfortable, humiliating thing that they could talk about. Right. So. Well, Angie, I just want to thank you really for everything you do and being so good at what you do. And Angie is actually on the state. Um, yeah, we have a state chapter for our Child Advocacy Center. Um, so there's Child Advocacy Centers all around the state. Um, and so we serve uh, LaPorte County, but we also serve Porter County, LaPorte, or, uh, Stark County, and Pulaski County. So all those, um, we have teams in all those counties that come up and bring their children to us and I think that's kind of one of the biggest things that has grown over the years. We started out with just LaPorte County doing 70 interviews and 10 years later, we, you know, are doing over 400 interviews with the four, you know, other counties that are closest to bring their kids to our advocacy center. Wow. That's wonderful. And I know you're always learning because of your connection with the state group. It Mm -hmm. is statewide and national, you know, new techniques and tools and ideas that you're always on top of everything. Yeah, there's a lot of research that's always out there, Um, and so we have a national child advocacy center, we have a state child advocacy center, and everybody's looking at the research and making sure, you know, just like medical fields and everywhere else, research is looked at and updated, Um, and so we just make sure that we need to stay on top of, you know, the research and that we're doing the best practices that we can for our families and kids. Well, thank you, Angie, so very much.